Good morning, Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, before I start my speech, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this session um, for giving the keynote speech. It's my sincere honor and pleasure to participate uh, in this symposium for global standards. Cities, as you know, take up 3% of the land's Earth's surface today, uh, yet they accommodate a majority of the human population. And they also generate uh, more than 80% of the economic output. And they also generate uh, 60 to 80% of greenhouse gas emissions, including uh, carbon dioxide. So essentially cities and communities in general, uh, the urban areas uh, today are the epicenters of our social, economic, and also environmental challenges globally. In this context, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, referred to as SDGs, commonly referred to as SDGs, um, essentially formulated a common unified global agenda for all nations and in turn for cities also, because this is where all our challenges are manifested. So, um, and these SDGs reflect the needs and expectations of the peoples around the world. In addition to UN SDGs, we also have the Paris Agreement uh, recognizing climate change as a threat, and it's established an international legally binding treaty for almost 200 nations today um, as, a, as a global agenda. So if you combine the UN SDGs and also the Paris Agreement, essentially the cities have a very well-defined common global agenda uh, to achieve in the coming years. Uh, definitely the UN SDGs are for this decade, but also uh, until the middle of the century, we have the issues regarding the climate change as well. So that essentially establishes the common globally unified agenda. But in addition to that, cities also have their own particular challenges, specific aspects that need to be addressed. So it's very important to identify the people's actual needs and expectations in the cities, formulate them, and add those challenges almost to the global common unified agenda. So for cities, there's a common essentially global agenda, but right below it, there is also a specific agenda that drives their transformation in their urban environments. So how can digital transformation enable this uh, agenda for cities? If you look at digital, digital transformation or digitalization in general, um, essentially it uh, forms a very strong and powerful tool for cities to utilize as they uh, try to accomplish their agenda pertaining to global common one and also the local challenges that they have. So today, by utilizing uh, digitalization and digital transformation, we can sense urban data, we can analyze it, we can uh, even simulate outcomes for cities, we can make predictions, we can also prescribe solutions that they uh, can adopt for, for uh, achieving or implementing their urban agendas. So digital transformation essentially plays a, an enormous uh, opportunity for accomplishing the agendas of the urban environments. In addition to that, digital transformation also can play a very strong tool, can act as a very strong tool to understand the needs of uh, the, the citizens and residents in cities uh, by utilizing engagement tools, participation tools. So uh, it forms almost the basis for the transformation, but also for understanding the needs of the transformation, particular to the cities themselves. So it's a very powerful tool that we can use. So we have the agenda on one side, and then we also have the, the tools that can solve this problem. So how can we put these two together to, to make this transformation viable and successful at the end? There are two things that I want to highlight regarding that. Um, the first one is the public policies, and the second one is the standards that are required. So essentially, if you look at the public policies, the city administrations need to endorse or adopt the, the public policies that will accomplish this transformation with respect to their uh, urban agenda. So this is one side of it. And in that context, I would like to mention the importance of U4SSC, the United for Smart Sustainable Cities Initiative, which is coordinated by ITU, UNEC, and UN Habitat, and supported by additional 14 UN agencies, which acts as a, as a global platform uh, to encourage public policymaking and to facilitate the use of ICTs 
for achieving uh, this digital transformation in the context of smart and sustainable cities. So the U4SSC plays a major role when it comes to the public policy uh, issues around digital transformation. Uh, and within the U4SSC, in the last official meeting, a new thematic group is established called the Digital Transformation of People-Oriented Cities. So within that group, uh, the thematic group aims to address various issues around digital transformation for people-oriented cities stemming from uh, or ranging from, from measurement issues, KPIs, to, to different applications of digital transformation in cities, uh, guidelines for net zero. So there's a, there's a wide variety of topics that will be addressed within the thematic group. Uh, and I'm humbled to be one of the co-chairs of this thematic group. And I would like to invite all the city administration, interested city administrations, academia, and also uh, practitioners and private sector pro solution providers to participate with us and formulate a, a framework almost, a broad approach to digitally transforming cities, which are uh, oriented towards people's needs and expectations. So the first one that I mentioned was the public policies. The second issue that I want to discuss is the standards. Standards are also very important because I have mentioned that there's a global agenda, almost a common unified global agenda that applies to all the cities. So standards essentially are commonly agreed um, documents, methods that cities can adopt, frameworks that cities can adopt to implement these, uh, their own urban agenda. Within the context of standards, I would like to mention the ITU, the ITU uh, T, which is the Standardization Bureau of ITU, which essentially undertakes uh, their activities around standardization. And within the ITU, I would like to mention also Study Group 20, which is dedicated to IoT and smart sustainable cities and communities, where various issues pertaining to digital transformation are actually addressed within the study group itself. Um, all the way from architecture to interoperability, security, evaluation and assessment. So there's a wide variety of issues that are handled within the ITUT study group 20. So these are all uh, very much applicable within the context of uh, digital transformation for cities. I'm also happy to indicate that um, three major standards development organizations, IEC, ISO and ITU have partnered to form the Joint Smart Cities Task Force for further collaboration for digital transformation in order to achieve smart cities and communities. So that's a very actually a positive development in the sense that major standards organizations are coming together to avoid overlaps and to also accelerate the development of standards for the benefit of cities uh, in the future. And we look forward to even uh, collaborating with other actually standards development organizations since the common agenda that we are all facing as cities uh, are very important and we have almost no margin to, to you know, have overlaps or uh, create inefficiencies in terms of developing our standards. Last but not the least, I also want to, want to mention one more important issue. So we said we have the global agenda, we use digital transformation to, to address these. And I also mentioned two things to make it happen, the public policies and also the standards. But especially if you think about the common agenda and the common standards, there's actually an enormous potential, an economic potential for cities to capture, which is that these standards, the common standards and the common agenda enable also common markets almost across the globe, spanning all the cities. So there's a common market in terms of demand, which creates an enormous economic opportunity for the common supply also across the world. In other words, instead of creating point solutions which solve only a specific, uh, let's say, challenge or an issue in a city, the common issues that we have create a big potential for private sector, for economies, for economic sectors to undertake by creating supply markets that not only apply to a single city, but probably across the world, since we have a common agenda, common goals, common objectives to achieve especially in these challenging, economically challenging times uh, and due to the pandemic itself, which was exacerbated, uh, there is a big economic opportunity to achieve this people-oriented agenda while also sustaining the city itself in terms of sustainability, but also sustaining the economy 
that, uh, that provide solutions to these urban problems. With that, I would like to uh, conclude my speech. And once again, I thank all the organizers uh, for giving me the, the opportunity to address yourselves. And also I wish you very productive and fruitful discussions and deliberations for the remainder of today. Thank you very much.